is bedtime. And at our bedtime, our custom, our tradition is to pray with our children. <clears throat> I'm in a room by myself. My wife is in another room. And I begin to pray with my children. Now what I haven't told you is that my heart is fuming over something my wife said or did. And I'm having a very difficult time forgiving her. However, it's time to pray with my children. Should I pray? Will I pray? Well, we continue and we go ahead and pray. And we pray the prayer that we've prayed so many times. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who is in heaven, you know the words. And I get to the part that says, Forgive us our sins as we forgive others. My heart is pricked. And I knew what was coming before I started this prayer. Am I being more religious than righteous? I must confess, I have been. Sometimes it's easier to adhere to religious principles and rituals than it is to actually walk in the right heart, as Yahweh's called us to. I had to repent. I had to ask my wife for forgiveness and forgive her of whatever has been done if I was going to maintain this prayer to be true. Forgive me as I forgive, um, as forgive me as I forgive others. How, what a, what a sobering passage and sobering phrase to say. You know, in the passage in, in the chapter we read today in John 19, it's so startling and, and, and to see the Jews embrace to being more religious than righteous. In verse 31, we see that they placed emphasis more on the Sabbath than on having the right heart towards an innocent man, Yahshua, Jesus Christ. In verse 31, it says, Since it was the day of preparation, and so that the bodies would not remain on the cross on the Sabbath, for the Sabbath was a high day, the Jews asked Pilate that their legs might be broken and that they might be taken away. Imagine this, three men on the cross, one whom is undoubtedly innocent, hanging there in, in asphyxiation almost, because that position, science has shown, causes a man to eventually suffocate for, for an ability to pull himself up and take appropriate breaths. But they wanted to expedite the matter. No, not to put the man out of the misery because their hearts were filled with so much pain of watching them suffer. They wanted to expedite the matters to hold to their religious rituals. To their, to, they were more religious. And there was nothing wrong with observing the Sabbath and resting. And Passover was coming up. By all means, this was the command. However, there was also a command not to murder. There was also a command not to be angry with your brother. All these things they have done with Yahshua while he was living and even now up to the point of his death. So that even in their hearts, while their hearts were full of deadly venom and anger and black vile, they still adhered to religious practices. Can this be? Is this possible? My brothers and sisters, let it not be with you and I from this day forward. Let it not be ever said of us uh, from anyone, including ourselves and Yahweh, that we were way more religious than we were righteous. What do I mean by this? That we were, it was easy to uphold the ordinary and traditional practices of religion, praying, going to church, talking a certain way, and doing all the outwardly things. But in our hearts, there is a lack of righteousness, of simply doing what was right. Let this not be. In my, in my upbringing, I saw quite a bit of this in those who I looked up to and when I went to religious meetings, whatever it is. And I've, no excuse, copied a lot of those practices and thought, well, this is okay. It's okay to act one way and be a different way, just as long as you please everyone and you, at least you believe in God, right? But this wasn't, this is not the case. So, how sobering it is to watch these men and watch my heart and ask, 
am I like this also? Are you like this also? I encourage you to do some self-reflection to be to ensure that we do not become religious over righteous. In sharing these scriptures, I think of a passage in Matthew chapter 5 when Yahshua is going over the Beatitudes. Just to illustrate the fact that he's more into you being righteous than religious, he says words as follows. In chapter 5, he says, in verse 21, you have heard that it was said to those of old, you shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you, everyone who is, listen to this, angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Why? Whoever insults his brother will be liable to counsel, and whoever says you fool will be liable to hell of fire. So if you are offering a gift at the altar and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift. Leave your gift there before the altar and go. First, be reconciled to your brother and then come and, off, come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. <clears throat> he goes on to discuss lust as well. You have heard it was said you should not commit adultery, but I say that everyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery. You know, I looked up in the Greek, Greek what this says more particularly. It says anyone who looks at a woman with the intent of lusting after her has already committed adultery in his heart. You know, I mention these two because one could be religious and say, well, I never murdered anyone. Surely I don't break the law. But dispense with all the acts of righteousness by hoarding anger and embracing bitterness in their hearts toward their family members, toward their friends, toward government officials, towards colleagues at work and their supervisors. <clears throat> but they boast, we can boast easily and say, well, I did not murder. I'm holding to the religious principles. I didn't kill anyone. I'm not a murderer. I'm not bad. Yet to Yahshua and to Yahweh, God, he sees this as the same. He says, holding anger in your heart is murdering your brother. It's having these intentions. It's the same as adultery. Looking at a woman lustfully or turning with your eye to do so is already committing adultery. He says, I'm seeking righteousness. You seek religion because it's so much easier to, uh, to hold to religion than to righteousness. Give me a rule and I'll find ways to walk around it. He says, no, you missed the heart, the whole heart from the beginning. So what am I calling you today? I'm asking you, brothers and sisters. I'm pleading with you and imploring you in the name of Yahweh. Be righteous in your heart, in your spirit, and in your mind. Throw off all things that are religious and rituals and routines and seek what is right in the eyes of Yahweh. Though you may not be able to remember the verse of scripture, you know what is right. Though there may not be written because there's a particular situation that you can think and dance around, he's giving you the Holy Spirit to convict you, to encourage you, to lead you to all truth, and so you know better. May Yahweh bless you and keep you on your journey for righteousness. Thank you.